We had the, uh, I guess what I'd call the textbook family, you know, two kids, we just didn't have a dog. Well, Adam was our oldest son. Uh, he was born in 88. Matthew was born four years later. He was much more of a calm, even-keeled uh, child, where I was kind of a more rambunctious, high-energy, bouncing off the walls um, type of kid. He was involved, he loved people, and I think he really learned from that, the connection about the importance, even at that young age, to be able to give back. He was really involved with his faith. When he started to, to get into that, I knew that was something that I wanted to be a part of someday. As a pastor, I would often place him in a position uh, to be able to exercise what he believed because it was so influential uh, with the people that were around him. We shared a lot of this, the same interests. You know, we were both very into water skiing, um, him probably more than me. Anything about the water he loved uh, from, from little on. When he was, uh, I believe it was a freshman, he, he joined the Web Footers water ski team. He was 16 years old and basing pyramids with uh, some of the other adults. We were on a, a vacation. We went to vacation in Shawano Lake, and we did that every year. And it was our 10th year of doing that. Uh, so probably some of uh, our greatest memories and some of the kids' greatest memories were, were on that lake. We would have our boats right out on the dock, and literally all day we'd ski and kneeboard, and we'd come back and eat, and then we'd go ski again until the sunset. And we'd get up the next morning, um, and we'd do it again. A whole bunch of us were going to try and ski around the lake. We got to a point where everybody had dropped off but Adam and myself. He, he fell uh, kind of in an awkward way and um, uh, sustained a head injury. As I kind of got into the boat, I kind of realized something was wrong. We uh, immediately got to him, got him in the boat, um, uh, made a beeline for shore, called 911. That was when a very long, long journey would begin for the family. We spent a, spent a lot of time praying and uh, prayed very hard and never for an instant did we think that it was going to end up like this. You know, as a mom or a dad, you would do anything. You'd give your own life for the life of your child. But in this particular situation, it's like being on the sidelines and wanting to get into the game to do something to change the game of life for their son. But there was nothing you could do. I mean, I remember fragments of it, but it was all very much a blur. I mean, I basically lived at the hospital for the, the 17 days. So then we waited, and uh, 17 days later, he passed away. At that point, I couldn't understand it. I, I had prayed every day for their safety. That didn't get answered. I prayed that he would be able to be healed and come back to us. That didn't get answered. The only thing that I began to hang my hat on was perhaps he, he was an organ donor. So perhaps some good could come out of this terrible, horrible thing. And we waited. And it became very clear that he wasn't even going to be able to donate his organs. This was not intentional. This was not anybody doing anything they shouldn't have been doing. It was a freak accident of a wave hitting a ski, causing it to f flip up. And that was Father Dan's comment a lot, was God would never choose this. That was very important to, for us to hear that. When given the choice, God will always choose life, always. This here is the, the risk living poster that Adam um, purchased right before we went on vacation. He wanted some posters for his room. So he went shopping and he got one, uh, a picture of Tahiti because he liked the sand, he liked the water. And the other one was this risk living poster. Well, he just loved the quotes that were in there. Uh, and each one was about really living life to its fullest. So not risk living in the terms of risky habits because Adam was not a risky person. No. It meant more because it was kind of a challenge coming from Adam. And it was so appropriate to the way he lived his life that, uh, and it was such a loud resounding message to us who were left behind, who the last thing we wanted to do was risk living. So that very much helped to carry us forward. And ultimately that's how we, we believe that God wants us to live. God wants us to be fulfilled, to be strong, to be able to give back, to be the best version of ourselves.